Hello everybody and welcome back to a new video. I am Pat from Pat's Path Predictor and we have a lot of interesting weather to cover for today, tomorrow, as well as the next few days. So we're going to be covering all of this. We have three enhanced, actually we have two enhanced risk days in a row. We have a slight risk for uh, for Friday as well as uh, some 15% risks that we need to go over. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into this. Alright, so this is the situation we have right here. There is an enhanced risk for day one for Oklahoma City, Norman, Fort Sill, Wichita Falls, and all the area around it, as you can see right here in parts of Oklahoma and Texas. The slight risk area goes from the, t uh, the Texas-Mexico border to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Same thing with the marginal risk all the way up to F Springfield, Missouri. So this is what we have right here. The tornado threat is at 10% with that hatched area, which means there is a 10% risk of tornadoes EF2 to EF5 in strength within 25 miles of a point right there. So potentially strong tornadoes are, are possible for today. The wind threat's at 30% uh, right here, which means there's a 30% risk of 50 knot or 58 mile per hour winds within 25 miles of a point. The hail threat is probably the largest threat out of this because this is the 30% hatched area risk right there, along with that 15% some of it hatched right there which means that there is a 15 to 30% risk of two inch hail or more within 25 miles of a point. And we've been seeing quite a lot of hail with severe weather recently. So yeah, I'll be keeping an eye out as that situation progresses. So this is the summary and we'll read some of the synopsis uh, for you right now. Summary, numerous severe thunderstorms are expected across parts of the Southern Great Plains this afternoon through tonight. Strong tornado and very large hail potential are the most probable along the southeast Texas panhandle into portions of southern Oklahoma and north Texas. Southern Great Plains. A wide variety of potential forecast outcomes are evident today, with unusually large spread among guidance in this stage of the outlook cycle. As such, the middle categorical risk is probably the most statistically appropriate forecast, even though potential does not exist for intense supercells capable of producing very large hail and strong, uh, d even though it does exist excuse me, for for intense supercells capable of producing very large hail and strong tornadoes. The reason this is basically an enhanced risk and not a moderate risk or higher is because there's still too much uncertainty, which is unusual. So they're keeping it at it uh, for the current time. Uh, the next update goes out at 11.30 a.m. Uh, and if they issue the moderate risk then, that's basically, that's up to them. So I'll be keeping an eye out for you guys and reporting it, uh, reporting it when it happens. Southern Great Plains. A wide variety of potential forecast outcomes are evident today with unusually large spread among guidance uh, in this stage of the outlook cycle. Uh, right here. Okay, we just read that. Uh, initially, guidance d diverges with a degree of late morning elevated con uh, convective coverage within a robust low-level warm uh, theta E advection re uh, regime. The western and southern extent of this activity differs substantially for, uh, which provides low confidence on how far the surface fr uh, front warm front will advance. The leading edge of the rich Gulf moisture is characterized by mid-60 surface dew points has spread across the Permian Basin into the Edwards Plateau in eastern Texas. Guidance is, that is subdued with elevated convection, such as the Nine Her and Rap, suggest that the moisture plume and warm front will reach the southeast Texas panhandle and at least uh, the southern half of Oklahoma. This, pro uh, this profoundly impacts the potential intensity of dryline supercells, with several HER runs adamant of long-lived uh, high-end EF2 to e uh, high-end 2 to 5 kilometer, excuse me, um, uh, um, uh, updraft helicity uh, during the dryline surface warm in front intersection. Under the more supportive scenario, such as the 60 NAM or 0Z ARW uh, NSSL, the CAPE into the Texas handle will be much more sub subdued in amplitude and, s and spidal uh, extent leading to the uh, initial discrete supercells tending to quickly evolve into a cooler boundary layer over the eastern panhandle of western Oklahoma. Differences are also pronounced with the degree of warm sector convective development ahead of the dry line from the big uh, co uh, country of north central Texas during the afternoon. This, too, will have impact spidely on how far north the MCS development occurs this evening. The primary strengthening of a broad uh, level southerly is anticipated in the 3-6Z th to 6 Z time frame, which is about 10 to 1 a.m. for those of you who don't know, in the pre, uh, primary vorticity lobe within the uh, slow-moving southern Rockies, excuse me, with shortwave trough ejects onto the south central high plains by this. 
uh, the convective mode will probably be dominated by the eastern moving MCSs uh, uh, with primary severe th uh, threat co uh, confident with uh, confident to confined to along uh, this uh, and south of the spital and unclear warm front sorry if I'm struggling a bit there it's just this today it's just a bit difficult for me to uh, for a diff uh, more of a difficult read for me today there's a lot more technical stuff in there so yeah let me explain it there is a quite a lot of uncertainty the her and rat models which are the short wave uh, short term models they're adamant that this thing's going to absolutely take off however the nam and a couple of other models are not so sure about that they think the cape's going to be more compressed so i want to actually take a look at the differences we'll get to the gfs in just a second but the her model let's take a look at that all right so this is the her model we're going to sh uh, shift this to the, the basically the southern great uh, Great Plains. I did not mean to do that. Here we go. Okay. Thank you. All right. So this is basically what the her model is suggesting. The her model has cape cra the cape cracking three thousand joules per kilogram in a lot of these areas right here. So that's what they're that's what they're thinking. The wrap also has a lot of cape and especially in the Panhandle of Texas and our parts of Texas right here. Like over 4,000 joules per kilogram in some area, areas right here. The NAM, by contrast, the NAM actually has decent cape. It's just further to the south in Oklahoma and Texas right here. We're cracking 3,000 joules per kilogram of cape, and there's little cap to counter that, really. So, yeah, that's basically what's going on. Let's take a look at the GFS. The GFS actually has uh, the cape... Uh, uh, yeah, the GFS actually has cape not really cracking like barely cracking 3000 in some areas so i can understand the the model is in disagreement right there but the nam in the uh, the nam in the her seem to be the most aggressive right now so yeah i'll be keeping a close eye on it we well, should also take a look at the dew point temperatures uh for these models as well because we're cracking upper 60s to 70s in some points of the her the wrap a uh, more widespread 70 degree uh, uh, lower 70s degree Fahrenheit temperatures right here. Uh, the NAM, uh, same here, just further to the east. So that's what's going on. The temperatures, they're going to be in the 80s in parts of Texas. All like that cold front is right is basically right here. So that's where it is. We're seeing we could see temperatures in the 80s in parts of Oklahoma, Texas, right here. So this we have a good environment for severe weather today. So I thought I'd share that with you. Let's go ahead and go to the day two outlook right here. This is the, for tomorrow. Enhanced risk is issued for parts of Texas, Louisiana, and Arkansas. M a slight risk in Missouri, Jack uh, sorry Missouri, Jackson, Tennessee, Western Tennessee, Mississippi, uh, Louisiana, Texas, Oklahoma, and most of Arkansas. This marginal risk is everywhere else. So let's go ahead and look at the tornado threat. It's actually, the, uh, ironically enough, the lowest uh, threat out of all of these. This is going to be more of a QLCS uh, line that's going to move through. So uh, that's basically what's going on. There's a 5% tornado risk. The wind risk is actually at 30% uh, percent right here in this area right here. 15% in the, in the slight risk and, ten, and sorry, 5% in the marginal. The hail, like the wind's actually going to be the highest threat, uh, threat like, which is, again, understandable because this is a QC, uh, QCL... Uh, uh, QLCS line, which is a very wind-driven event that goes through. So, yeah, that I can understand that. The hail threat is at 15%. So, yeah, I can understand where they put that mod uh, that enhanced risk right there. The, we're going to go ahead and read some of the summary and the synopsis summary. A severe threat will be likely be likely on Thursday across parts of the Southern Plains, Arklatex, Ozarks, and lower to mid Mississippi Valley. Wind damage, hail, and a few tornadoes are expected. Southern Plains, Arklatex, Ozarks, to lower to mid-Mississippi Valley. An upper-level low will move across the Central Plains on Thursday as an associated 5 to 7, uh, sorry, 50 to 70 knot mid-level jet. If it was a 5 to 7 uh, uh, knot jet, that would, that, wouldn't, that would be minuscule. So I apologize for that. As it moves uh, east-northeastward across the Red River Valley into the Arklatex. At the surface, a cold front will advance southeastward across the southern plains and will be located from te the Texas Hill Country northeastward into eastern Oklahoma by afternoon. A very moist air mass will be in place ahead of the front and the surface dew points in the upper 60s to lower 70s Fahrenheit. At the start of the period, scattered elevated thunderstorms should be ongoing ahead of the front across parts of the Ozarks. 
These storms were forecast to move eastward along the mid-Mississippi Valley by midday. Further to the southwest, surface-based thunderstorms are forecast to develop along and ahead of the front. These storms are expected to organize into an MCS and move uh, east-southeastward along the Arklatex during the late afternoon into the mid lower to mid-Mississippi Valley into the mid to late evening. So, uh, concerning this environment, model forecasts continue to develop moderate instability along a large part of the moist sector from central Texas into western and central Arkansas by the afternoon. However, the models have backed off markedly on the instability across the northern Ozarks due to the elevated convective complex that is forecast during the morning. Strong deep layer shear is forecast within the moderately unstable air mass further to the southwest from central Arkansas into north northeast Texas. This it will be due to the mid-level jet passing through the southern Ozarks. To the right of the mid-level jet, lift and shear will be enhanced, making conditions favorable for squall line development. The squall line is expected to become organized in, during the early afternoon from western Arkansas into northeast Texas. A wind damage threat is likely along the leading edge of the line. Along, although, although linear mode should be favored, isolated supercells could develop ahead of the line or within the line itself. Tornadoes could occur with supercells or could be associated with the line echo uh, wave patterns with, uh, within the squall line. Overall, this event, uh, the models have not been consistent concerning the distribution of the instability. This co uh, contributed to a, large, uh, to a large spread of potential convective outcomes um, uh, for a lower confidence forecast. Further southwest into central and east Texas, convective coverage will be more isolated with southwestward extent owing to less uh, large uh, scale ascent and weaker deep layer shear. Still, the storms can form with moderate uh, within the moderately unstable air mass should be and should be associated with uh, any a threat for wind or damage or hail. So I want to go ahead. Once again, we're going to go ahead and look at the models. We're going to look at the HER model for this. We're going to go ahead and t uh, take a look at the cape to see how large that cape is. And that cape isn't in exact. Uh, they've backed off on it a bit. It's not exactly that large. The, the cape in some of these areas is only cracking 2,300. Uh, and the rest of it's like like uh, between 1,000 and 1,500. It is cracking 1,500 in some areas. But yeah, it's we don't see an area that's getting above 2,500 according to the HER. The wrap is a bit different. It has the timing, a bit, uh, it has the timing a bit uh, more different actually. The nine, this is the nine Z for the wrap. So, yeah, basically, yeah, same thing here. We're not seeing that big of the cape between. We're seeing areas like at sixteen hundred. We're not, cra we're not getting past twenty five hundred. I mean, we are in a couple of areas, but that's about it. So. Yeah, that's basically what's going on with that cape. So we could see some weather, but it couldn't. It shouldn't be too terrible. But they, once again, there is no cap to counter that amount of cape. So yeah, that's that's what's going on with that. The let's go ahead and take a look at the dew point temperatures with this as well, because as this moves as this moves through, we are seeing those dew points getting into the upper 60s and lower 70s, especially in Texas right here. So we might see some more action in Texas. Uh, than we might uh, than we might be bargaining for. So, yeah, the temperature also. If once this thing loads up, all right, we're in the 70s throughout this time. So, odds. Uh, so yeah, the humidity in this is pretty uh, is pretty uh, decent. It's probably in the up. It's it's definitely in the upper 80s for sure. So I'll be keeping an eye out for that. We'll go ahead and go to the day three outlook. There's a slight risk issued for. Uh, for parts of the deep south from Louisiana to Tennessee into North Carolina. So we'll be taking a look at that. Probabilistics at 15%. We'll read the summary and synopsis uh, for the deep south. Thunderstorms associated with wind damage and hail are expected during the day on Friday from the Gulf Coast states northward into the Tennessee Valley. And ice an isolated wind damage threat that could, could also develop in parts of the Ohio Valleys. So, southeast in Tennessee Valley. An upper level low will move across the mid uh, Mississippi Valley on Friday as a 55 to 65 knot mid-level jet translates eastward through the base of the system at the surf at the surface a cold front will advance southeastward into the Tennessee and lower Mississippi valleys a morning convective complex is forecast to move eastward across the lower Mississippi Valley and central Gulf Coast states moderate instability should develop ahead of this complex uh, with the uh, surface-based thunderstorms forming and expanding its co in coverage by around midday. 
The most favorable severe threat during the afternoon will be determined by the extent of cloud cover and surface heating along the locations of the outflow boundaries from the morning storms. The models are, uh, je are currently forecasting moderate instability by early afternoon from the Gulf Coast uh, northward to the eastern Alabama and northwest Georgia. In addition, uh, the model forecasts have 0 to 6 kilometer shear along a quarter in the 40 to 50 knot range, which that's a pretty good amount of shear right there. Uh, this uh, should support supercell development with the potential for wind damage, hail damage, and isolated tornado threats. Uh, but, the but the favored mode is still uncertain. If multi-line if multi segments are, uh, for are favored, the favored mode, then wind damage will be the primary threat. If there's a lot of un there, there's a lot of uncertainty at this time due to the morning uh, convective complex, which should, will determine the afternoon distribution of uh, surface heating. The slight risk has been placed along the corridor where models are in best agreement concerning the early afternoon instability. So we have that mo so that QLCS that's going to be hitting Arkansas is going to be moving through the deep south during that morning, just for context. And basically, uh, basically what happens afterward. Well, if the if it's completely cloudy, it's gonna bust the event. However, if it if it gets uh, either uh, completely sunny or partly cloudy, there's another opportunity for surface heating to create more instability. So let's go ahead and take a look at the her if that goes um, if that goes that far out uh, for the Cape. We might have to switch to we might have to switch to the Nam for this. So yeah, we'll sw uh, we'll switch to the southeast. We'll go to the Nam model right here. So yeah, we're looking at. Yeah, we're looking at some good instability, especially in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama right here. We're cracking two to three thousand joules per kilogram. Some areas above that, so that's a pretty decent event that's going to be going on uh, right here. So I'll be keeping an eye on it as the situation develops. Let's see how that dew point's doing. Oh yeah, there's more than enough moisture for this. There's dew points in the 70s, upper to mid to upper 60s in these areas right here. The temperature. Uh, right here is in the eight, 70s to 80s right here, so that's what's going. Uh, that's what's going on. We are seeing potentially upper 70s, lower 80s dew points. So definitely enough moisture. It just depends on that cloud cover, uh, everybody. So I'll be keeping an eye out as the models continue to come in. So the day four, five, and six outlook is very interesting, and I'll go over why it is very interesting. The day four outlook. It's a very rather small area in Nebraska and Kansas right here. Uh, so basically, uh, it's affecting a population of 833,000. Uh, it does impact. The, it does include the city of Norfolk as well as Lincoln, Nebraska. So, yeah, that's what's going. It's a situation that's going on there. Day five. This is the one I want to watch actually because when I get to the Cape va uh, values, I want to show you exactly what's going on. Uh, day 5 goes from Kansas City all the way up to Omaha and Lincoln as well as Des Moines, Iowa. Affects the population of 5.2 million, so that's an area of concern right there off the bat. And then Day 6 it encompasses the parts of the Great Plains in South Dakota and Nebraska, as well as in Iowa and Minnesota and Wisconsin. So, yeah, the population affected uh, will be 8.7 uh, million, so that's an area of interest I want to keep an eye out on. So we'll go ahead and read the days 4 through 6 as... Uh, uh, outlook right here. A low amplitude of progressive upper level trough is forecast to move across the western uh, U.S. on Saturday as moisture advection takes place across the Great Plains. By afternoon, an axis of moderate instability is forecast to cross the southern and central plains. Thunderstorms will likely develop at the northern end of the instability corridor uh, across the Dakotas and Nebraska. The best combination of instability and shear is currently forecast over in Nebraska, where a severe jet will uh, develop near the exit region of a broad uh, mid-level jet, a large hail and wind damage could uh, be the primary threats. Would be the primary threats. Excuse me. A 15% co uh, contour is added across the parts of the Central Plains for Central uh, for Saturday afternoon and evening. On Sunday, the models maintain a southwesterly mid-level flow across the Central United States and continues. Uh, continue moisture advection from the eastern parts of the Great Plains into the Ozarks and Arkla Tex. The northern end of the unstable air mass is forecast to move across uh, eastern parts of the Central Plains into the lower Missouri Valley. Even though forcing could be minimal, thunderstorms would develop in areas where low-level convergence becomes locally mixed. Strong, deep-layer shear could exist along the instability axis, created favorable conditions for severe storms. Any severe storms would remain isolated, but a 15% contour seems warranted due to the forecast 
uh, forecast uh, quality of the low level moisture and instability. Let's look at that instability actually. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure, and let's go ahead and go to the Midwest right here. So I don't think the, I'm not, I'm pretty sure the NAM does not go that far out, but the GFS definitely does. And I want to show you guys this real quickly because this is off the bat, kind of, I wouldn't say off out, out of this world, but this is what we are potentially looking at right here. This is the 6Z uh, GFS mall run. And look at this. We are seeing Cape values, at least in southern, at least in parts of Oklahoma and southern Missouri, we are seeing Cape values cracking over 5,000 joules per kilogram. Let me repeat that. In fact, I wouldn't even say that. We are getting close to 6,000 joules per kilogram. And this is, the, uh, this is the 6C run. This is the most recent run. We're, cr we're close to cracking 6,000 joules per kilogram. Now, depending on how that uh, how that cape is executed, either uh, it could either go all ham or the moisture would not be, uh, be enough for this thing to really boom as it might. But I will be keeping an eye out on this. As the as cape like this is absolutely insane, so let's actually go ahead and take a look at the dew points uh, as well. Look at this, the dew points. We're cracking, uh, we're cracking to the mid 70s, 75 in these areas right here. Uh, the temperature, uh, the temperature is going to be in the uh, in the mid to upper 80s right here in this part of the country. So good, inst uh, good moisture with this as well. Now, once again, I will say it is too early to really say that. Uh, to really say this model will hold, but this I saw this last night, and the model's been holding so far, but I will be keeping a very close eye on it in the next few days, because if we're seeing Cape values of almost 6,000 joules per kilogram, that is a really bad sign. So I will be keeping a very close eye on it. Let's just hope that Cape comes down a little, uh, comes down. So that's what's going on for day, f uh, day five, day six. For Monday, southwest mid-level flow is likely across the north-central states. This will em enable low-level moisture advection to continue across eastern parts of the Great Plains over the Mester Mississippi Valley. Surface dew points uh, could reach the 70s across uh, parts of the upper Midwest. Thunderstorm development would be possible Monday afternoon to the axis of moderate to strong instability from the mid-Missouri Valley to the northward into the upper Mississippi Valley, again considering the quality of low-level moisture. A 15% contour seems warranted in spite of the uncertainties. So let's actually go ahead and take a look at the Cape for uh, up the upper Midwest into Minnesota. That Cape, this is for uh, this Cape is for Monday right here. This Cape once again, like areas like in Wisconsin and Iowa and Missouri, we're seeing a wide area of 4,000 joules per kilogram, and in parts of Kansas we're cracking 5,000. And this is six days out. So there is some uncertainty with this, but again, uh, but again this is what this is what the cape is looking like. The moisture uh, content for this dew point temperature, it's it's huge. We're looking at 74, 75 degrees uh, right here. Uh, the temperature is going to be in the mid to upper 80s, so a good amount of moisture to accompany that. So. That's basically the days one through six outbreak. I know this video is uh, is pretty long, so I apologize for that. But I wanted to cover everything, just to give you uh, uh, just to give you guys uh, uh, basically an idea of what's going on. If they do issue a moderate risk for today, I will update you guys as that happens. But with that being said, that is going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps me out and helps make more videos like these. Also, my Greensburg Tornado documentary is now out. I will leave a link to the description below if you are interested. And with that being said, guys, have a wonderful day. If you're in Oklahoma, prepare for some severe weather. And most importantly, stay safe.